thanking my pastor for this opportunity. Um, I ask that you, if you have your Bibles to turn to uh, Luke 14. Luke 14, and we're going to start at uh, verse 16. And I like to be able to have a conversation focused around the thought process of evangelism. Luke 14, starting at verse 16. It's okay, it's okay. Luke uh, 14, starting at verse 16. 14 and 16. Luke 14, yep, starting at verse 16. I try to run Bible study today. We're going to have a conversation. So I'm going to leave y'all to talk. Luke 14. Starting at verse 16. When you find it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking for it, say hold on. Take your time. Take your time. Luke 14. Yeah, we had a good time in Bible study this morning. Luke 14 and 16. And the word of the Lord says, Jesus replied with this story. A man prepared a great feast and sent out many invitations. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. When the banquet was ready, he sent his servant to tell the guests, come, the banquet is ready. But they all began making excuses. One said, I have just bought a field and must inspect it. Please excuse me. Another said, verse 19, I have just bought five pairs of oxen and I want to try them out. Please excuse me. Verse 20, another said, I just got married, so I can't come. The servant returned and told his master what they had said. His master was furious and said, go quickly into the streets and alleyways, alleys of the town, and invite the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. After the servant had done this, he reported, there is still room for more. So his master said, go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone you find to come so that the house will be full. For none of those I first invited will get even the smallest taste of my bank. Praise God for that. And so I want to speak this morning from, uh, this afternoon, excuse me, uh, from the thought process, go and tell and come and see. Go and tell and come and see. I think it's interesting when you uh, look at this particular set of scriptures where uh, the feast has been prepared and to have the opportunity for uh, someone to invite you in to be able to go to this great feast. There was a time where uh, God had invited everyone to be able to partake in this particular feast. Uh, however, a lot of times, like nowadays, there were people that come up with various excuses on why they couldn't come to the feast. Uh, what are some of the excuses that you hear that people give on why they can't come to church? We'll say for on a Sunday morning. Anybody? Okay, okay, I don't have a car. Still talking about COVID, which I think is quite interesting. They'll talk about, uh, I can't come to church because of COVID, but you'll see them out at Walmart. 
And there's a whole lot more people at Walmart that could probably get you a lot sicker than you can with the folks at church. What are some of the other excuses that you hear? I got to work. It's a day to rest. Oh, that's a good one. What you got? Uh, uh, see, I, I can't come to church because of my wife, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly can't use that excuse, right? And so, uh, and, and neither should any other husband use that as their excuse that I can't come to church because of my wife, right? But also, we shouldn't have anybody that use that I can't come because of my husband. I, I remember years ago, uh, Deacon Green would talk about how there's 168 hours in a week. Think about that. It's 168 hours in a week. And here it is. What you're trying to do is you try to get somebody to give two to maybe three to come to church. Right? That's not even 10%. I mean, if you think about all the, all the time that you spend doing so many other things throughout the week, how often do we spend on the phone or texting or liking at Facebook, or any of those type things, right? Watching TV. I know during football season, I know where y'all can find me on the Sunday evening. I'm gonna come to church. Uh huh. I'm gonna come to church, but shortly thereafter, uh, y'all can find me at home in front of my TV. And so, but I, I'm gonna make sure that I serve the Lord. And, and, and I, I've learned as I've gotten older that that football is still be there. But I was taught by uh, by my mother that only what you do for Christ will last. And so you want to make sure that you do what you can for Christ. And um, here it is. You've got all of these various excuses that our people are using. Uh, but are, are, we, what, are we telling people about Christ? You know, to be able to have the opportunity to be able to talk to somebody about Christ, are we sharing with the world that the wages of sin is death, but to have a personal relationship with Christ leads to eternal life? Are we having those type of uh, conversations? And if we are having those type of conversations, what are we saying to people? When you have the opportunity to be able to be the only Bible that some people see, what are we saying? Uh, uh, I have a question for, uh, that anybody may answer. Uh, when you talk about Christ loves you, why do you love Christ? Okay, while y'all thinking about it, I'll tell you about why, why, why I love you. All right? And so... Uh, I, I, I love him because he loves me that through it all. Regardless of some of the places that I've been and some of the things that I've done, he still loves me. Uh, I'm thankful for the blessings that he continuously bestows upon me. Uh, I'm thankful that he wakes me up in the morning. I'm thankful that I'm able to look over at my wife and that she's still breathing. Right? I, I'm thankful that as she travels back and forth to work every day, that I don't get a phone call that she's stuck on the side of the road or something worse than that. Uh, I'm thankful that I can still look from this seat up here at my grandmother serving on a Sunday morning as she's almost 90 years old. I, I'm, th those are some of the th reasons why I'm thankful for God. Uh, I'm thankful that I, could, that I had the opportunity to be able to talk to my mother less than an hour ago. Uh, just thankful for things that uh, I, I've learned as I've gotten older, not to take the small things for granted. God is still in the blessing business, and so, uh, when someone says to me, well, what do you share with somebody about why you love Christ? These are some of the things that I share with them. Yeah. We have to remember that it's our testimonies that, that sometimes get us through. Yeah. Uh, uh, we talked this morning about how uh, I'm thankful when I see that my friends and my loved ones get new things. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thankful that when, when God takes the time out to bless them. And so because of the blessings that they receive, it lets me know that he's in my neighborhood. And then at some point, he's going to turn down my street. Yeah. And if I wait just a little while, yeah. he'll come up inside my driveway. Amen. Those are some of the things that I'm thankful for. Amen. And so, again, I ask you all, what are some of the reasons on why you love Christ? Y'all nobody love him? It's just me? Oh, okay. There, okay, there you go. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. To be able to know that he did not give up on you. You know, when you... Uh, Maybe it's just me that when you look back over your life and some of the things that you've done, you know, when you, when you think about some of the places that you've been and some of the things that happened at some of the places that you've been, but that you, that you weren't there to be able to tell the story, 
you know, maybe I'm the only one that has uh, been to a house party and has left that party and then find out that later on that something happened at that party. But while it happened at that party and I was home and I was safe, that if I had been there for another five or ten more minutes, that, that, that the story could have been about me. Uh, to be able to think about how we were traveling to Texas, my, uh, my, fam my, my mother's side of the family is predominantly from Texas. And so to be able to travel, I remember we were traveling one summer to Texas, and there was literally a storm right behind us. Like, you could see the, the sun in front of you, glory to his name. You could see the sun in front of you, but you can actually see the storm clouds behind you, right? And so then when we came back to that area as we were traveling back home, just the destruction that that storm had left because there were tornadoes that had went through there. And so to be able to know that if we had just been, imagine if we'd have had to pull to the side of the road. Uh, imagine if we had to stay at that rest stop another 10 or 15 minutes, how things could have turned out entirely different. We talked this morning about how um, Brother Clemens talked about, about him and how God protected him while he was in Vietnam. Uh, to think about some of the, the people that God has protected while you weren't even around. And I talked about how God protecting him in Vietnam allowed for him to help me to become a Sunday school teacher. To be able to say that when I first started teaching Sunday school back in around 2005, 2006, that I started off with the little boy. And so to be able to remember uh, teaching with him and Brother Rain. And to be able to be down inside that division. And then to go from there and uh, as things progress to be able to say that now uh, I'm answering the call. And here it is, we got these individuals that the servants uh, approached to, for them to be able to answer the call that God had gave them. Are we open to answering the call when we hear the Lord's voice? Are we able to be able to tell people that uh, thus saith the Lord? We talked about evangelism earlier. We are, uh, besides just being on the evangelistic team, how many of you know that all of us are supposed to be evangelists? All of us are supposed to be in, uh, go and share the gospel. All of us are supposed to be able to tell somebody thus saith the Lord. But here's the thing. I remember years ago, Pastor Harris would talk about reading the word for yourself. And you have to read the word for yourself because if you don't read the word for yourself, how can you share the word with somebody else? And then to be able to take it a little bit further uh, than just reading the word, are you allowing the oil that comes out of the word to saturate yourselves? Right, because I'm, I'm, I'm under the impression that any time that you spend time in God's word, that whatever you're reading on is supposed to affect you first. That's right. That's right. That's right. The word has to clean you up, like uh, uh, to be able to look at the word almost like it's a mirror. Amen. And when you look down at the word and see it as a mirror, then you have the opportunity to be able to see the blemishes of yourself. That's right. That's right. First, you need to work on cleaning up yourself before you look towards cleaning up anybody else. Amen. Which leads me to another point. How often do we hear people talk about I have to get myself together before I come to church. <laughs> Think about that. We hear that quite often. I, I have to get, I, I'm not quite right to be able to come to church. Uh, I, I've, I've got this going on or I've got that going on. But if we could get ourselves together, think about that. If we could get ourselves together, then what would be the purpose of Christ? What did he die for? Yes, sir. don't need no haircut to come to church. I mean, but think about that. I mean, again, that goes back to some of the excuses that people will give to why not come to church. But think about this right here, Deacon Hill. What if you'd have asked them to go to a ball game? Well, what if you said to somebody and said, hey, I got these tickets to go to the Pistons game? Not to do it all. With no problem. You know, it, it'll be some of the things that we won't think twice on what we'll do but then when you talk about taking the opportunity to be able to get a little bit closer to Christ, to be able to go hear a, a, a word that's just for you. The conversation that we were having this morning is that uh, I, I thank you for anybody that may be streaming. Uh, however, if you have the opportunity to be able to come out to the house of the Lord, you should. 
uh, uh, the days of walking around with your pajamas on and still streaming the service <laughs> should be over. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it should be. Right. I mean, because you don't have any problem with going to work. Right. Come on out to the house of the Lord. Amen. And so that, uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why I say that, and please, I'm hoping that anybody that may be streaming that they don't get upset at me. Uh, but one of the issues that I have is that as you're looking, uh, what about all of the distractions that may be going on around you? Uh, to be this, you know, while you're sitting in service, you can't have a cup of coffee and a sandwich. <laughs> Distraction. You don't have to worry about what may be going on on the TV while you're <coughs> streaming on your computer. To try while you're trying to watch both. And while we're talking about it, it's quite interesting about how sometimes uh, you can go and stream what you want to see. Uh, it's almost like nowadays we've been given a menu as to being able to pick up or pick out what we want to see. Uh, based upon what, I, what my taste is of the day is what I want to hear. Uh, but my question would be, is why is it that we've gotten so comfortable with picking what we should hear as opposed to what we're supposed to hear? In other words, what I'm saying is, is that uh, my grandmother cooked today. And she didn't ask me, what did I want to eat? But however, I knew whatever it was that she cooked was just what I needed. It may not have been what I wanted, but it was what I needed. And that's what it is when you come to your house of worship. The person that's standing behind the, the sacred desk is supposed to give you what you need to hear, not necessarily what you want. Yes, sir. No, you could. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I I come from the generation if you if you're not gonna eat it, well the two of y'all gonna sit at the table together. One of y'all gonna eat. And, and, and so uh, to be able to sit down at that table after a while, that stuff on that plate don't look so bad. You know, while you're sitting there and your stomach start talking to you, that liver and onions don't look so bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have me a little bit. Mine was liver and onions or, or squash, Jesus. Oh, my God. I don't really care for squash now as a grown man, right? But when my grandmother fried that squash, glory to his name, guess what I was eating? And not only that, you didn't go in there and fix the sandwich. You know how they have the alternative that you, if you don't want this, you, you can get an alternative. No, I didn't get an alternative. You, you got to eat exactly what it was that she fixed. And that's what it is about Sunday morning. We've gotten to the point to where we're trying to get what we want as opposed to getting what we need. And so as we share with uh, the people that we run into, um, it talks about him going out into the streets and the alleys of the town. Think about the individuals that are, that are usually supposed to be in those areas. Homeless people, uh, those that maybe suffer from some sort of an addiction. Th those are the people that you'll probably find when you go into alleyways, side streets, if you will. But when you read God's word, who was it that Jesus was with? Jesus wasn't with the uh, so-called important people. Jesus was with the people that really needed him. Jesus took time to be able to spend time with the people. There was a book that Pastor Harris gave me years ago that talked about they smell like sheep. And inside this book, what it talked about is uh, David and him spending time with the people. In order to be able to be able to really relate to the people that you serve, you have to be able to spend some time with them. And even regardless of what they may look like, what they may sound like, what they may smell like. Yes, ma'am, Ms. Curry. Regardless of all of those things, they're God's people. I, I remember uh, I, being here one Sunday, uh, I had the opportunity to preach, and I put on the, gar the gown that I used, the robe that I used to baptize in. I put that robe on, and I put my waders on. And I brought in my fishing pole. And at the end of the fishing pole, what I used for bait was the, the, uh, the daily word, the, and what I did was is that I walked the aisleways, and I went fishing. And as I went fishing, I, I dropped that word on people. And then I happened to drop it, glory to God, on a young man who was suffering from alcoholism. 
Uh, and this young man, even at that moment, he was sitting at the back of the church and he talked about how nobody said anything to him. We as the church, what are we doing when we have the opportunity to be able to minister to somebody else? Talk about it, Miss Kurt. And, and, that's, and that's part of what I'm talking about this afternoon, is that we have the opportunity to be able to affect and change people's lives. And, see, and, that's, and that's important. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's correct. That's, imp that's important, Elder. It's important to be able to, when you come inside, you don't know what hell somebody done been through all week. You done been through hell Monday through Saturday, and you finally said, you know what, regardless of what I done been through, I'm coming to church. And then when you get here, you got to deal with the fact that folks are looking at you funny. They worried about how you smell. You know, for some people, they Saturday nights do run until they Sunday morning, right? Maybe I'm the only one. And so because people say Saturday nights are running until they Sunday morning, but they did what they could to get to church, sometimes their outfits may be too small. Sometimes they may be too short. Sometimes they, sometimes, 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 whatever it is that they may be, but what are we doing when we get a chance to be able to, to say to them, about how good God has been to us. At the end of the day, what we need to do is to be able to, to love on them like Christ loved on us. Are we open to be able to share that love with one another? If you still have your Bibles open, I ask that you turn to Matthew 25. And then go down to uh, verse 35. 25 and 35. This particular scripture here uh, is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, we were having this conversation about this uh, scripture on Friday. When you find it, say amen. And so it says, Matthew 25 and 35, for I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. Verse 36, I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. And so uh, we were having a conversation just this past uh, Friday with some gentlemen while we were down at the county jail. And so while we were down at the county jail, uh, to be able to say uh, we are looking to be able to come down and visit you while you're in prison. But what we wanted to do is make sure that we encourage the individuals down there that that was not the end of this story. That the same way that Christ loves on us, he's loving on you as well. That even through the whatever mistake that you made that caused you to be incarcerated, that God still loves you through that. And to be able to share with uh, testimonies with people about how some of the uh, foolish things that we've done. <laughs> and that even through those foolish things that Christ never stopped loving us. To be thankful to be able to say that through it all. May maybe I'm the only person that has a through it all story. But through it all, to know that he still loves us. Amen. Glory to his name. And so when you talk about being hungry, so uh, the reason... 
why this pati these particular set of scriptures are near and dear to my heart is because uh, part of the reason why I'm on, I'm on the evangelism team till this day is because of Sister Valerie Brick. Uh, she was a person that evangelism was very important. It, very, it was a, not only was it important, but she worked out in the community and did things for her in the community that people didn't even know that she was a part of, yeah. unless she was there, because she didn't take pictures of herself while she was working in the community to be able to lift herself up. It was about doing the work. And so uh, even now, to this day, down at Carriage Town, they have a room in her name because of the work that they've done, that she did, right? And, and so because of, this, because of what she did, the reason why, or another part of the reason why these scriptures are so important to me is because here at Macedonia, we have a program called Community Love Day. And the reason why Community Love Day was started is because uh, we wanted to do something in honor of her. The love that she was sharing with the community, we wanted to continue on and continue to make sure that people were still going to say her name. And, and so it started off with Sister Agnes Shackelford. She started off with uh, getting purses and filling those purses up with toilet paper. And as a man, I said, well, men need stuff too, Brother Cole. Yeah. <laughs> we wanted to know, men need stuff as well. And so then well, we, we moved from there. Uh, I had some conversations with some friends of mine that are barbers, uh huh. and these barbers came out and cut hair for me. I, and I was thankful for that, that they would take time out of their busy schedule and all of the things that they have going on to be able to cut hair for free. I appreciate you, man. Right? And so to be able to have those individuals that would come out and, and, and do things for the community for free. That's really what was important is that we wanted to make sure that you didn't have to pay for anything once you stepped on our campus. Uh, it was important for us to be able to give out boxes of food. It was important for us to be able to give out clothes and shoes and free haircuts and manicures and toiletries and all of these things to be able to make sure uh, that we wanted the community to know that one, we were here, and two, that Christ has blessed us enough to where we want to be a blessing to somebody else. Right. It, it's important to be able to do more than just be talkers of the word. But we also have to be doers of the word. We don't do it to be seen, but I want to be seen doing it. That was one of the things that I picked up from Bishop Roberson. He talked about when it came time to be able to uh, sow, sow a seed, that I wasn't sowing that seed so somebody could see me sowing that seed. But I wanted to be able to be seen sowing the seed. We talk about uh, sowers and eaters. 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, talks about sowers and eaters. And what's the difference between sowers and eaters? Sowers are people that walk around with their hands open. Because that way, when they receive something, they have the opportunity to still give it away. Sowers. But you also have eaters. And eaters are responsible for who? Themselves. And they walk around with their hands closed. And what they have inside their hands, they're going to keep inside of their hands. They're not, they're not going to give it away, but also that means that they're not going to be able to get nothing in return. I want to make sure that I, uh, when I get seen, that I'm seen being a sower. Yeah. I want my hands to be open. Because that way, not only can I receive a blessing from the Lord, but I can be a blessing to somebody else. It's important to make sure that we have the opportunity to be able to be a blessing to someone else whenever the opportunity presents itself. And so we wanted to be able to have a conversation today about what are we doing as a church? Are, are we going out and, and uh, talking to people about why they need to be back in church? And we're not just talking about being back in church because we're looking to pick numbers up. We're looking to have people come back to church because we're really looking to save souls. Yeah. At the end of the day, I want everybody to go. Because the understanding that I have is for those that don't have their own personal relationship again with God, is that when that great getting up morning comes, we won't get to see everybody. There was a pastor that said recently about how it's unfortunate that nowadays because of funerals, everybody appears to be going to heaven. That's unfortunate. Why is it unfortunate? Because we're saying to, to, family, to families that your loved one 
is going to heaven. But you knew all the hell that that person raised while they was on earth. You also recognize that that individual did not have their own personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And according to what his word says, uh, you have to have a personal relationship. And so let's uh, introduce people to this man called Jesus to be able to talk about having your own personal relationship so that when, when your great getting up morning comes, you know what side you're getting up on. Uh, like I said to you earlier, my folks are from Texas. Hottest place I've ever been in my life. But I want that to be the hottest place I've ever been in my life. <laughs> Glory to his name. I, I, you know, I, 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 done, I done been some hot places. I done been to Las Vegas, Jesus, uh, and it get very hot. But glory to his name, I don't want it to be, no, I don't want to go nowhere. Oh, my God. I don't want to go nowhere that's as hot as Las Vegas. If it's hotter than Las Vegas, I don't want to go. Glory to his name. Hmm? I, I look, I, if you know what, but guess what? I don't want to go to Yeah, yeah. wherever, wherever, hey, where, I, we were in Las Vegas. And it said it was 120 degrees outside. And I just said, I don't know what Las Vegas had did to Jesus for it to get this hot down. But whatever they did, they need to repent right now. Because it was hot. And I said, if, if, hey, if it's this hot here in Las Vegas, I can only imagine what hell going to be like. And I don't want to go. Oh, mm -mm, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, no. I just have to be honest. Being in Vegas was hot enough for me, I don't want to go, right? And I'm saying that because, I'm saying it jokingly, but I am oh so serious. Amen. And to be able to say that, I don't want to cross not one person and them have to go to hell. Yeah. Because as much as we want to talk about heaven and all of the great things that heaven has, we have to talk, we have to talk about hell right. and all the stuff that it don't have. Amen. To be able to talk about, to talk to people, again, about the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Oh my goodness. To be able to say that to somebody when we talk about uh, the feast from earlier. Man has to recognize that man shall not live by bread alone. But our every word that proceeded. Proceeded. Grab a hold to that TH. Why? Because that means that it's going to keep coming. It's going to keep coming out of Gladys. The word of God is going to keep coming. It's a, the living word. And because it's the living word, means that means we got to continue to eat on it. Yes, it How often, uh, maybe I'm the only person that those cookies on top of the refrigerator call my name in the middle of the night. <laughs> maybe it's just me. <clears throat> and so because they call my name in the middle of the night, I have to also remember that sometimes I need to be in the middle of the day to be able to get a little word in. Because the Bible tells us that our, our, our spiritual man and our natural man are always going to be in fight with each other. And so if they're going to be fighting with each other, then I need my spiritual man to be just a little bit stronger. Because if I let that natural man, if I let that natural man get stronger, ain't no telling what's going to come out of his mouth. You know, uh, I, w I was raised by, okay, I won't, I won't, I won't, break, I won't break it up. Okay. Yeah. And so, all I'm saying is, is that when we have the opportunity to be able to cross somebody's path, what is it that we're saying? What we have to recognize for some of us, for some people, we may be the only Bible that they see. Are we the same person outside the church as we are on a Sunday morning? Think about that. Because you got some folks that dress up real good on Sunday. But they'll cuss you from three ways from Wednesday on a Tuesday night. <laughs> I, I just think about that. What, what are we exhibiting when we have the opportunity to be able to cross somebody's path? Yeah. And so I want to make sure that I'm doing what it is that God's word says. Amen. I want to make sure that when I have the opportunity to be able to walk into a stranger, to make sure that I, I, I show them the love that Christ showed me. Because you just never know it's that one kind word that comes from you that may make the difference in somebody's day. It could be make the difference inside of somebody's life. 
you could have a person that could be on the brink of giving up and just show, hey, how you doing today, could make the difference inside of their life. And, and while I'm on it, uh, uh, please uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, we need to get to the point that where we quit walking past people in church on a Sunday morning like we don't know them. And then going back and saying, well, I didn't speak to them because they didn't speak to me. Like, like where, where is it written that they had to speak to you first? You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've been through again. What, you never know what it takes for somebody to be able to get to church. You don't know what they was going through, going on, what was going on at home. You don't know what they've been stressing with. And so to be able to walk past them, to have the opportunity to be able to pour a kind word into somebody. Are there any questions, comments, statements, anything? Well, I want to tell you all I thank you, thank you, thank you for this opportunity. To God be the glory. And so uh, are, are there any announcements that need to come before the church? So we don't want to have uh, be under the impression that everybody is saved. And so I'd like to take this opportunity to be able to open up the doors of the church. When we, when we talk about the... Oh, praise God. Praise God. Accept Christ as your personal Savior? Yes. <laughs> okay, so, can I, can I share a story with you? Yes. Year, years ago, somebody's grandfather, I won't say <laughs> whose grandfather, uh, when I came walking down this aisle, I was very nervous. Are you nervous? So, why are you nervous? had to make the walk too. We've all, we've all made that walk. And so it has nothing to be nervous about. Actually, it's something to get excited about. And they should have got a whole lot more excited than they did. Amen. So I'm going to give them another chance. <laughs> and guess what? That's for you. And so uh, have you ever heard of Romans 10 and 9? No. Well, I got something for you. Can, can you read a little bit? Mm -hmm. Can you give me a I want you to read something for me quick. Can you read that? Sorry. You. Oh, it's already over there. Oh. If you openly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Declare. Declare that Jesus yes. is long Lord. Lord. Yeah. And be live. In your heart, that God raised, raised him from the death dead. dead. Mm -hmm. You will be saved. Praise God. Praise God. So now my question is, do you believe he died for you? Yes. Would you yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you believe that? I need you to tell me. Yes, because he protect me okay. and he cares about me. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Let me just ask. Congratulations. And so um, we will make sure that we get your name and stuff so that we can get you uh, ready for new members class and to get baptized. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. Can I get a hug? That's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Claw that somebody come from, you know, you ju you just expect that. Oh, uh, you know, it, it's it's so for me, for Miss Miss Perry, for me, it was um, we was 
talking this morning about Sunday school teachers. And I just remember uh, Mother Caldwell and, and, and your mother, Miss Thompson, uh, being my Sunday school teacher. And I'm just thinking about how important Sunday school is to me. And, and to be able to see the next generation of individuals, you know, that, that the cycle keep coming. Um, we were talking about Pastor Curry's model to seek the unsought, to bring the unborn, to teach the unsought, right? Um, and how important that is. It, it, it's important to, to, to as a church, uh, all of these years later, to continue to embrace that. Because we have to seek the unsought. We have to bring the unbrought and we have to teach the untaught because it's important. God bless you. along with what you're saying, I, I just remember that there was a generation of us that talked about how we're not going to raise our children right. And so because we said that uh, one of the things that fell by the wayside was Sunday school. But you, you can see the writing on the wall uh, even when I was down in the young people division, which, which was part of the reason why we tried to find uh, you, new and unique ways to be able to, I don't want to say entice but to be able to get children to be able to come to church and to be able to come to Sunday school. We talked about doing breakfasts, but I found out that most of the folks that were eating <laughs> it, it, was, it was grown children that was coming down there. That's, that's, what, we, that's what we're going to call them. We're going to say we, it was somebody, because they were still somebody's child. So, you know, but the, 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 the target audience was not who we would capture. And so then we, we, we need to go um, back to the drawing board. We need to figure that thing out. And, and, and so the other side to it is, is that we can't continue to have church look like the world. That, that's, that's the other side to it, is that why are we telling you to leave something that we look just like? That, 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 that's, that's something that we have to keep in mind as well, is that if we, if we are looking to draw people, what are we using to draw? And, and, and I understand that it's important to lift Christ up at all times. We always have to lift up Christ. And so then, what is it that we can do, which will, I'm sure will be a, a, a different discussion for a different day. But that's something that we need to keep in mind is that we need to be able to do something to be able to get folks to not, to not only come back to church, but to come back to Sunday school as well. Amen? And so uh, I, I, I know that this morning that they, uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out the difference between morning and afternoon. <laughs> Bible study class.
see, there, there you go again, Michelle, when we were talking about how it'd be those testimonies that'd be able to get, get, a, get us through. You know, uh, Brother Clemens brought up about COVID and about how Praise God for that. Any? Grandmother is the only person that that tightened me up with a smile today. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, how you get somebody together with a smile on your face? It was unique, and I and I, I praise God for it. And so, uh, in 